Hey, I'm Nick Boy, and welcome to Pocket. And today I'm checking out Armello from Melbourne based studio League of Geeks. Armello is a digital board game. It's kind of like someone took Civ and Risk and then the Game of Thrones board game and Lords of Waterdeep and it just forced them to have a baby and then they shoved that baby into my computer. Now I've played the tutorial, which is surprisingly long and deep, but it's excellent. It really gives you a good oversight as to how to play the game. It breaks up into four sections and it slowly introduces mechanics. It's quite long, like I said, it took me about 40 minutes to play, but I'm glad that I did and it was a really elegant way to learn it because this being a board game, there's a bunch of mechanics that you need to know pretty much straight away. Unlike video games where you're going along and you're learning new things, you kind of need to know everything at the beginning so that because they all start happening straight away. So I think it did a really good job. And so far with the tutorial, everything is just insanely polished. So I'm really hoping that the promise of the tutorial lives up to the actual game. So let's have my first game of Armello and see me get it right straight away. Single player. So the basic idea is you play as one of four characters in the tutorial. It looks like there could potentially be room for five here, but it, it showed me four in the tutorial. Uh, you need to start off by picking a faction, like a house, to play as. And they're all woodland creatures. So Thane is a winter wolf who loves to kill other things. And Sana is the forest bear. Let's go with, let's go with the Huntress. I never got to play as her. The Howling Arrow. From the wolf to bear, the clans declare, the time has come to take the throne. For rot's creeping, it twists our king. Heroes rise, save Armello. That's the one thing I wish this game had, is voice acting. It's all just text. But voice acting is very expensive. And I think you can already tell that they put all that money into just being stunning. So throughout the game, you're picking quests. So you take one of these and then you get the rewards here that are shown. You want these because there are multiple victory conditions to actually winning the end of the game. There's like a strength fight one, uh, there's collecting a few things around the map, there's a political one, and then there's like a, a damage, rot, corruption, evil victory condition. The basic premise of the game is that the king of this land has been infected with a, a rot, curse maddening thing and he's slowly dying at the end of the game he will be dead and you need to be the new king that's how you win so let's try to become lord of armello i'm gonna do the spirit stone one let's try it let's go for a spirit stone victory so i've accepted my quest now i need to go complete it i need to find it here on this insanely gorgeous map there's this sigil here this is my sort of house crest so let's head in that direction Select my person, I get three action points, which are up here in the corner, and their movement. So one, two, I'm in a swamp, so that gives me a uh, minus one health every time I hit one of these sort of swampy, murky wasteland things, and then uh, three into the forest. End my turn. Now these are the other characters taking their turns in the single player here. It's just the computer that I'm playing against, but there is... I feel like the game gets its legs with the multiplayer, like all these sort of games, you just want to be playing against other people. So they will be uh, the other characters that you need to murder and stop from becoming king. Uh, now on the left here, I've got cards that are, they work as both sort of spells and special abilities and inventory uh, and items that I can use. Okay, troll treasure. You can't tell what smells worse than the green mire, the mud or the troll. The creature is asleep, half covered in filthy water. Just stab it. Just stab it in the um, just stab it in the in the in the butt. So at this point, I have two options. Every time you encounter one of these, you've got a good one and a bad one. So I can just rob the creature, and uh, and I'll get this stuff, and that will automatically work. Or I can attack it. I will get the same rewards regardless. But then, if I win a fight with it, I will get a spirit stone if I win, or I'll lose two health if I lose. I have a 50% chance of this fight winning, and the game does everything for me. So let's just, let's live a little. Let's just click it. Blue is good, red is bad. Oh, uh, yes! You wait the troll with a shout, like the one I just did. Leap forward and attack, the fight is fierce, but you emerge victorious and claim the beast spirit stone. So that's one spirit stone. I believe I need four 
and then I kind of take them to the kingdom or something, and then I become king or queen. And with all the little, like, the outcomes of the fights and setting the scene, there's a sort of D&D &D aspect to it. Of there's little little uh, table setting mystery and, and, and telling you how your fight went and that sort of thing. It's all very exciting. It's all very exciting. Another mechanic that goes on here is at the end of each day, whoever has the most prestige, which is down here, so I've got one prestige and apparently everyone else has none. Whoever has the most prestige gets the ear of the king. So I get to pretty much choose what the king declares for the next day. So I get an advantage. So I can either have the king's madness is apparent, all heroes swap their hand of cards with another random hero, or the king plays cursed lands across all normal perils in the kingdom, increasing their difficulty. I have no idea what that means. So I'm just gonna do, let's just randomly swap cards with everybody. <laughs> All right, choose a new quest, brilliant. Let's go this one because I'm going for spirit stones. I draw new cards, so I'll take an item one, a spell, and trickery, play to tile, grant scouts from this location to the end of next target's turn. You can play your cards at any time as well, so if it looks like someone is heading in your direction or you know that you're about to enter a battle like I think I am, with this peril thing, then I could play, say, Wild's Warning, which grants me evade until the end of the target's next turn. The target will be me because I put it on myself, but you can play those cards on any character. So if for some reason you wanted to give someone else evade, you could, but in that case, you'd probably play like a negative effect card on them. Oh, that poor bear. Okay, so this bear just died which I thought meant got you out of the game, but actually what happens is you just go back to your spawning area and you sort of lose the stuff that you had, but then you can continue going, which is great. It's sort of one of those things where it encourages you to play more aggressively and take more chances because you know that you're not actually getting booted out. The, one of the worst things in board games is when you spend 90 minutes playing and getting invested and then suddenly you're wiped out because of a stupid move and then you're like, okay, I'm just gonna sit here, and watch everybody else have fun. Or if you may, you sort of flip the table and storm out. Stop being friends with those idiots. Okay, in we go. Now, this little skull thing here means that there's a peril. I need to match, I roll these die and I match them, these symbols, and that means I've accomplished this. I can also burn cards, which I'll do very quickly and then explain why I did it. one in time. Okay, so what happens there is you come up against this peril. I need to match these three symbols down here in order to win this peril thing. I can burn cards. Each card has a symbol in the top right corner that matches these. So I got rid of that card, but I match that symbol automatically. I now need to roll a dice to, uh, to match this last wolf exploding sun one. Otherwise, I'm going to get very hurt. Oh no. And now I'm getting banished. So I'm being teleported to the furthest dungeon. Brilliant. What a kick in the dick. I have to go the whole way across the map because of one stupid dice roll. The game is actually surprisingly hard, like it ramps up pretty quickly. So now these guys are all off completing their quests. I have to go across the other side of the map and get that spirit stone again. It really is a game of backstabbing your opponents, which is a lot like the Game of Thrones board game and Game of Thrones. So the hound leans against one of the standing stones. Come on in, he says chuckling, but there is something off about how he says it. Is it the fact that a dog is talking? Is that the thing that's weird? Witch challenge, spirit stone. So I need to beat this. What happens if I don't beat it? I don't get the stone. Oh, please. There's too many... Hit! So, I don't get a stone, correct? Correct. Oi vey. Oh, I don't like the fact that that's random chance. So there's an element of chance with the spirit stone stuff. I could go with a prestige victory, like not now obviously, because I've committed to a path. But if I went with a prestige, it's are you fighting me? 
Is that what's happening right now? Okay, so I get more dice because at night I get an extra attack die. That's a, that's attack. Yeah, I'll burn that right now. I'll burn that up real nice. And a defense. Oh, I didn't do it in time. Okay, roll these die. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. So beautiful. The sound effects are great as well. Three, two. Yeah, run away, because we've only got one health. So between the combat, the cards, and the action points and movement, that's pretty much the basics of the game. There's a lot more depth underneath here, but that's what you need to know pretty much. I'm now going to finish this, find my spirit stones, we'll come back at the end and see how I do. Oh no, I should have played it to... So stupid, Nick! How can you both kill each other? Technically, I attacked first. Oh. The king is dead. Long live the king. Although not in this case, because the king turned out to be the stupid rabbit. Uh, what happened there was she won a prestige victory. So I was looking for the spirit stones. I managed to get one more, but uh, it wasn't enough. I needed to get four. What I realized halfway through is that you can get spirit stones by completing quests that have spirit stones attached to them. But there you have that, you know, random roll of whether or not you're going to get it or they are just scattered around the map in different locations and you just need to go there and pick one up. So uh, knowing that would have made it a bit easier. I do feel like it's a bit like Civ where there are victory conditions that are just easier than other ones. Sometimes it is just better to marshal your forces and just kill everybody else rather than going for the cultural victory. But uh, here, the Prestige won one. Okay, so that's my first game of Armello. I feel like the tutorial did prepare me really well. I, I knew the basic core mechanics going in and I, I knew what I was supposed to be doing. The game does a really good job of prompting you as you go along as well. I feel like I know more about it after the end of that one and could go into a second game probably with much higher chance of victory. Something that I think is fantastic about this is that they've really done justice to the video game version of a board game. It's not like they've just drawn pictures and kept everything flat and 2D like a board game, like some really bad adaptations do. Everything here is polished and it kind of feels like a Blizzard game. Everything has an animation, everything has a sound. There's a really good reason why you're playing this on a computer rather than on a tabletop beyond the fact that they just haven't made a tabletop version. Although I think they should because as a fan of designer board games, this, this is up there with them. This has a lot of mechanics that are seen in a lot of games and it puts them together really, really well. And it also sits up with some of the great board games with the visuals. I know I've harped on it, but the game is just stunning. All the art is amazing. And I love the fact that when you hover over cards and pieces of art, it credits the artist and the animator who brought it to life. I think that's a really nice touch and an acknowledgement to how important that is to this game. I can't say enough about the art. I love it. Uh, if I had one gripe, it's that the turns take a very long time when it's not you playing. I'm playing the computer at the moment and I feel like I would have liked to have just skipped all the computer's turns. I know playing against real people, you are gonna have to wait for them to make real decisions, but there was quite a bit of time sitting here not doing anything. But that is a small gripe in what I consider to be a surprisingly great board game and a really good strategy video game. It's a great match of the two, and if you're a fan of either of those things, I heartily recommend giving this game a shot. All right, that's it for today. My pocket is. Until next time, me boy out.